What is up YouTube? Today I'm going to be DIY rebuilding this OM642 turbocharger for the Mercedes V6. Uh, the turbocharger had a little bit of slop in the shaft and uh, so we ordered a new cartridge and we're going to rebuild it. First off, tools you're going to need. Ratchet, 10 millimeter box end wrench, 8 millimeter box end wrench, uh, a T25 for taking out little screws, and then you're going to need a E10 and an E12 uh, internal torque socket, and then a razor blade for cleaning off ceiling surfaces. And then this Allen head right here is going to be used in the reassembly process. Uh, I'll explain that a little later when we get to that point. Um, for disassembly, you're going to need some penetrant. Penetrant and heat is freaking key on these things, getting them apart. It's huge. Um, and this whole thing's already disassembled. I'm going to be explaining the whole process in the reassembly phase. But it's absolutely critical to use heat and penetrant to get this thing apart, or else it won't pop apart. Um, and then for reassembly, I'm going to be using uh, just red thread locker, red Loctite. So this vein assembly has already been put back together. I've already cleaned it, and I've already put the whole thing back together. Pay very close attention to the way that this is put back together. You have your alignment pins here and here. This one's actually more of a slot. This one's more of a, of a pinhole. And then you have your slit right here, which is for your, uh, your, the actuator that actually moves this back and forth. So next thing, we're going to put this inside the turbo core. Once I get this installed, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll actuate it and demonstrate how it works. But uh, when reassembling this, you kind of need to have three hands because these little rollers in here, all need to, everything needs to be put down at exactly the same time in order to get this to work correctly. Um, and when reassembling it, do not use any lubrication of any kind. This whole thing on the, uh, on the turbine side and the exhaust side is designed to run dry. Um, because of the extreme temperatures and because of the carbon coming in, you don't want anything wet in here. Um, so when you're putting back uh, together this entire end of the turbo here, um, do not use any lubrication of any kind. This is the new turbo core I bought. This is, uh, it, it's actually not OE, it's not Garrett. Um, it's actually Chinese. It's made by a company called Powertech. Um, they're a Chinese company and uh, they seem to make pretty darn good products. Their turbochargers and their turbo cores that they sell are, um, they're built in China and they're balanced in, uh, in the UK. Um, I have, uh, the, the company in the UK is called uh, TurboTechnics. There's a whole sheet in here, a spec sheet for the vibration and the balancing for the turbo. I uh, installed one of these on another OM642, that, uh, the turbo that I rebuilt probably two years ago, and it's working flawlessly. So uh, no issues there. This is purely mechanical. There's no electronics or anything in this that you need to worry about. So when putting this in here, you're going to make sure that the alignment slot and the alignment hole that are by my two thumbs here are going to line up accordingly. You're going to carefully flip it over, grab a hold of the movement ring on the bottom, and you're going to line it up right over here. And you're going to drop it on very carefully. Now I kind of screwed up right there, but I'm going to try and fudge it and make it work. Here you can see the function of the veins. Depending on the position of this lever, which is changed by the electronic actuator, um, when this moves, it opens and closes the veins. Your exhaust gas flow comes through here, and when it's blocked, obviously the turbo spins slowly, or not at all, um, and when opened, it allows uh, a greater rush and velocity of exhaust gases in here, spinning this turbine faster. Uh, it allows the, the turbo basically to control its own um, output and uh, there's no need for a wastegate. All right, next step, we're gonna be putting on this back piece right here. Uh, this can only go on one way because of the, the position of the screw holes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this clocked and then uh, show you the next step. All right, it's clocked in the correct position. And again, you can see the veins here. The exhaust gases are going to come in this way. Open it up, and they're going to come out the end of the turbo here and then to your exhaust pipe. Uh, the bolts that hold this thing on here, I broke two out of the five. And uh, so I got new bolts. These are originally Torx T25. These are Allen. I'm not sure what the size is. I just picked a, uh, picked a, a driver that would fit it. So I'm going to go ahead and put these bolts in. I'm going to use Loctite on them to make sure that they hold in straight. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, 
that's done. Sorry, I did not mention the uh, the size of these. Um, totally forgot offhand when I went to the hardware store to pick them up. They're just metric. Uh, you know, take your old ones, one of the ones that uh, that was saved. Take it to your uh, to your hardware store and get some stainless bolts. These are stainless, so uh, they don't have to be. But you know, I, why not? So uh, next step is we have our sealing ring right here. This is stainless steel. Um, it does not need to be replaced. It's spring stainless. Um, and unless it gets severely overheated, which is not going to happen in the, um, in the, in the uh, turbo itself, um, you don't need to replace this. So we're going to reuse it. Very, very springy still. Um, you're going to place this right here. There are sealing rings on the top right here. They're kind of like piston rings. Um, when tapping this housing over, there's a little uh, indent on the bottom right here, which is going to allow the, those uh, uh, rings to compress. Um, and then they're going to slide in here. So that's the next step. Uh, this is going to get clocked because there's a slight um, uh, pin on the side of here, which is going to line up with a pinhole on the side of this housing right here. So you can only put it on one way. So that's what I'm going to do now. All right, guys, I screwed up. As you can tell, compressor housing is on. I discovered pretty far along in the reassembly phase that uh, the turbine end was clocked wrong. Oops. Um, this core is aftermarket and the pin, the locating pin here, um, is in the wrong position. Um, so I'm going to have to probably shave that off or something and correctly clock this turbine housing here. And, uh, by the time I'm done with that, you guys, uh, I'll be in the next step of the reassembly phase as it pertains to the video. Next step in reassembly, the new O-ring you got with the new turbo core or the old one, usually they're still in good condition. You're going to put it right around here, just like that. There's no fancy veins or anything on this side, so you're just going to find out where this is going to clock. On the inside of here, you have a pin. On the pin, it's going to align with the hole that you have in the housing over here. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. got that done so uh, as you'll notice I did not use any Loctite on the bolts for this part right here you really don't need it um, it's not gonna get as hot as the exhaust end as the turbine end so next step is you're gonna mount the actuator actuator mounts on this plate this plate mounts just like that I'm gonna go ahead and do that Next up, after we got the actuator on, we're going to put the linkage that connects the vein linkage here to the linkage on the actuator. And they're held in place by these little E-clips here. Last but not least is to connect the flange here to the back of the turbo, but I'm waiting for a new gasket. Ordered one from the dealership. Um, I don't know if these can be reused. Uh, I mean, it's not like it's a liquid seal, it's a gas seal, and I'm sure you probably could reuse it, but just to be safe, uh, I am going to replace it. So uh, I'm not going to show this on camera. It's pretty self-explanatory. you got three bolt holes, one here, one down here, one over there. Um, and then the, the flange that actually holds this uh, to the engine mounts here, just like that. Boom! It is done! Finally, now, like I said, it's going to look a little different than the earlier parts of the rebuild procedure because, like I said, the clock for the uh, for the turbine end was wrong, so I had to redo that. Um, I got it. I used my original disassembly pictures to find out the approximate clock position. I'm going to probably have to fudge it a little bit, fudge around with it a little bit when I put it back on the vehicle um, just to make sure that this uh, uh, housing back here is in the correct position. 
Um, but that's it. It's done. Um, I had a few problems with it, getting it back together, but it's done and, you know, saved myself, what, 1400 bucks? Not bad. Um, it's definitely a DIY job. You don't need any special tools or anything like that. And that's pretty much it. Rebuild's done. Peace.